Hi YouTube, this is Brendan, and what I've got for you today is a video describing how you can find the limit of a trig function, in this case secant, as x approaches negative 2 from the right side. So when dealing with trig functions, you really want to stick to the ones that you're already familiar with. Uh, if you've taken pre-calc, you're probably very familiar with sine, cosine, and tangent. Probably a little less familiar with cotangent, cosecant, and secant. So the way that I'm going to choose to evaluate this is I don't want to think of this as secant, but rather I'm going to treat this as the limit as x approaches negative pi over 2 from the right of 1 over cosine of x. So let's think about what happens if we put negative pi over 2 in for cosine of x. Well, you might recall from the unit circle that negative pi over 2 would be over here, positive pi over 2 would be over here. So we choose to go counterclockwise if we're dealing with the positive direction, and we go counterclockwise when we're dealing with the negative direction. So what I'm looking for is the value of cosine where x is pi over 2, uh, and we remember that our cosine function is essentially our x-coordinate on the unit circle. So when we're right here at negative pi over 2, our x-coordinate is 0. So negative pi over 2 is equal to 0. All right, so we have 1 over 0, which is undefined. So it's either going to be infinity or it might be negative infinity, but we have to figure out which one it is. Well, as I'm approaching negative pi over 2 coming from the right, I'm coming in this way. So let's look at what happens to our x values as we move along the unit circle in this direction and as we get closer and closer to this value. So when we're all the way at 0, our x-coordinate is 1. When we're at negative pi over 6, our x-coordinate is going to be uh, positive root 3 over 2. At pi over 4, it's going to be root 2 over 2. At pi over 3, negative pi over 3, it's going to be 1 half. And as we get closer and closer and closer, we can see that this number is going down. We're going from root 3 over 2 to root 2 over 2 to 1 half. And as we get closer and closer and closer, we're going to keep approaching 0. But we're not quite there. And since we're coming at it from the right side, we can almost think of this cosine of x value on the bottom as just being a really small positive number. Something like that. And this goes on forever as you get closer and closer to negative pi over 2 coming from the right. You just keep adding more and more zeros. But what we can see is that 1 over a very, very, very small positive number is going to equal infinity. So that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it would actually be the secant graph. And if you remember how to graph secant functions, uh, or if you don't remember how to do it, a good thing to remember is how to graph the cosine function. So in green here, I'm going to do the cosine function. It looks something like this. And then it also goes in this direction. You know, so on and so forth continues onward in both directions. Now, since secant is 1 over cosine, the secant graph is going to be undefined where cosine is 0. So we're going to have vertical asymptotes at that point. And I'm not going to draw all these, but maybe just one more. And then if we do 1 over cosine, our secant graph ends up looking something like this with all these points of discontinuity at horizontal asymptotes. And this would just kind of continue in both directions. So if we can remember how to draw the seeking graph, we can also see that the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side is positive infinity. As I'm getting closer and closer to negative pi over 2, which is this value right here, my seeking curve is trending towards infinity. 
And that's how you do it. That's kind of a couple of different ways to look at the limit as x approaches negative pi over 2 from the right of secant of x. Hope you find this video helpful.